everybody, and welcome back to Mental Health Mondays. My name is Ben Barber, and I am joined, as always, by Mary Shalaba. Did I get it right? You got it. Yes, you got it. Yay! (laughs) It's a holiday miracle. Uh, Mary, how are you this week? I'm fine. How are you, Ben? Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, I don't remember the last time we did. Did we talk about, did we meet? Before or after Thanksgiving? After Thanksgiving. After, we, yeah. Because it was last week. How's your, uh, how's everything going? It's it's going, you know, the holidays are a bit stressful. I'm not going to lie. Um, but, you know, it's 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 going not too bad. How about you? It's, uh, it's going well so far. So, you know, no, 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 no complaints on my end. Um, we have, uh, we have a packed season of things to do. So, you know, it kind of never stops. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Yeah. So what are we talking about today? So I figure today we should talk about the stress of the holidays and not just, um, you know, stress of the holidays, but just how people react, good, bad and indifferent and um, how that can take a toll on your mental health, whether it's you're the one having the issue or there's a person kind of inflicting it on you because you're the closest to them. I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. The, um, you know, the holidays are always a stressful time of year. You got uh, uh, presents to buy. You have, um, you know, parties to go to, things to attend, or you have none of it. Right. Uh, and, And either way, it's very stressful. So like either you have a big family and loved ones and, a lot of pressure in that, or you're dealing with uh, grief and loss or loneliness or any of those things. I like either way. It's it's a stressful time of year. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and people handle it differently. And sometimes, you know, people handle it not in the greatest of way, and. Um, if you're the closest thing to them, they sometimes take it out on you. And no matter what you say or do, can't get them out of their funk or out of, out of their head. And it just makes it for a very hard time, especially if one is happy about holidays and, and then the other sad. And you just can't get that other one out of the sadness sometimes. And again, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to have, have those feelings. What's not okay is they take that sadness and manifest it on you like you're the reason for the sadness. Right. And I I know that that happens a lot too during the holidays because, um, you know, when you try to help or you try to have a conversation and they don't want to hear what you have to say, then they're going to try to drag you down like it's your fault and twist it around. And yeah. and it's sad because that's, it's like that old saying, misery loves company. So they want, they don't want to kind of get out of that at that moment. Um, but the biggest issue, too, on that is the self-medicating. And when I talk about self-medicating, I'm talking about, like, alcohol. I don't know, you know, I, I could assume some people would self-medicate with drugs, whether it's legal or illegal. Um, but that's not something that should be used because, you know, alcohol is a depressant. It's only going to make you worse if you're feeling sad. Um, what you need to try to find is somebody who will listen to you and that's when like a therapist is is a great or i hate to say a stranger is a great place because they don't know you they won't judge like your friends sometimes you know you've got your group of friends that are just yes people they'll yes you to death even if they think you're wrong they're not going to tell you and then you've got the group of friends that'll tell you the way it is but if you're in that frame of mind you don't want to listen to them so you call your yes friend you know so this the therapist is a great or, or just a third party is a great person to talk to because they don't prejudge. They don't have the history and they could possibly help, but you got to want the help instead of the, you know, hitting the bottle or, or whatever to, to feel better. Cause it's only gonna not just make your life worse. It's going to make the, the loved ones around you not want to be around you. And then it just makes the holidays now, bad for the people that were looking forward to the holidays. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
what are some things that people can do to, uh, you know, feel better around the holidays, whether they're, they're whether they're stressed out because they have too much to do or they're lonely or, you know, obviously let's break this down and take one at a time. But um, what are some what are some things that people can do to sort of cope with everything that happens uh, in this holiday season? Well, everybody's different, so it, it's going to be different responses for everybody. You know, for some people, they may just have to lock themselves in their room and have quiet, shut the phone off, not talk to anybody, just kind of meditate, figure out in their own head, you know, why are they feeling this way? Some people need to talk to somebody, um, you know, and again, that's a, that's a good thing to talk to somebody. You just have to talk to the right type of person um if you truly want to get out of that funk you know other people like i said will self-medicate but um you know a lot of people let's say that are alcoholics will just say a lot of them don't even realize they are or think they have an issue so they'll never call a sponsor or go to a go to a meeting because they don't think they have an issue because they just figure it's like a knee-jerk reaction, you know, just take a drink, no big deal, problem solved, they don't have to deal with it, they don't want to deal with what's going on in their head, they just want to be numb. Um, those are the ones that are really hard to convince that they need help. And I think that they would realize they need help maybe if they start pushing their loved ones away. The loved yeah. ones have to realize it's not them. They have to realize it's not their fault. They have to realize it's it's the other person's addiction. It's the other person's problem. You can't fix it. If you want to be there to talk, whatever, you can do that. But ultimately, it's the person who's self-medicating has to acknowledge it. It's like the saying, lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink, you know? Um, and, and, and that part is, is very hard. And I just wish, um, I mean, again, anybody can call 988 and they could talk to somebody and they can refer them. They can tell them, hey, go to your local church, talk to the local priest or minister, you know? They don't judge, they'll certainly listen to you. Um, Talk to anybody that you feel that you can talk to. If you, you know, again, if if you wanna, if you wanna do that. Um, if you don't, you've. I don't know how we can make them realize that you know self medicating is not the answer. Right. You know, and yeah. it's it's heartbreaking. It's honestly heartbreaking to see that. It is. It, it definitely is. Um... And there are resources, as, as we said, 988 uh, is a resource. There's tons of resources here in town. Um, yep. Obviously, you can stop by the Mental Health Resource Center. Uh, you can um, go to your local church. You can go to so many different things um, to get help. Uh, but, you know, it's it's one of those things where you have to want the help. Exactly. Um, yeah. Exactly. But it's the same thing for the person on the other end. So, you know, let's say your partner is an alcoholic and you're not, you know, you call 988 for yourself. Yep. So you know that you're okay, that it's not your fault because, you know, sometimes they'll want to drag you down to make you feel bad for their bad behavior. You know, um, call for yourself, ask questions, ask questions on how can you help them if you want to help them. You know, um, and know that it's okay to not want to help them. It's okay to walk away because you have to take care of you first. You know, there's a reason they say in an airplane, put your oxygen mask on first before you put it on somebody else. Because if you can't help yourself, you can't help the next person. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um so shifting topics a little bit here for a second, one of the other things that can really uh, lead to a lot of stress um, during the holidays is navigating family dynamics. Absolutely. Um, you know, so there's a Money lot of issue. Feeling... 
Oh, oh, it's, the, it's the mailman again. Hit me. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> no worries. So um, you give me a thumbs up when you're ready. But anyway, so so we want to talk a little bit about uh, maintaining mental well-being during family gatherings, because that is a big thing, obviously. Um, and uh, we will. Mary, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Um, so that's obviously a big thing, you know, sometimes when, uh, when we get in our family situations, we, we, you know, kind of, uh, bow up and, uh, you know, act like a dog, uh, with the mailman, like, um, you know, we can't, we can't help it. Uh, we, we say, we go into the, to it and we go, we're not going to talk about politics. We're not going to talk about this. We're not going to talk about that. And then you get in that family dynamic and there's nothing, that you can really do about it. Like you have to, um, address whatever it is. And that can be, uh, sort of, I don't know why I'm trying to fix this now. I don't know. There we go. Now I'm properly, uh, positioned. Mary, are we good? Okay. Awesome. Thank so, you. sorry um, about that. That's um, totally fine. She has, she has to see hide in the mailman all the time. It's really crazy, but it's okay. Um, so, so like I was saying, family dynamics, right? Like we, yes. we, our goal is to not let it bother us and it always does. Right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and the other thing with the family dynamics is, um, you know, the stress of the holidays for financial gain or not being able to get their child what they really, you know, what the child thinks that they really want because of television commercials or because of school or, or whatever. Um, you know, there's a lot of stress around the holidays for that to make it um, as best as they can for their, for their family. You know, um, it's not an easy thing. It's, it's not easy at all. So, um, and, you know, we want to let those parents know Especially in this town, I, I am so happy to be a Westerly resident on how people take care of each other here. I mean, if you haven't seen it, Sam Reed has a giving box at her house to give donations to whatever families in need. I mean, it's a wonderful concept. I actually went there and threw some stuff in her box the other day. Um, you know, this town comes together, especially in crisis. And, and that is what is just amazing about this town. And um, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else for yeah. that. It, it really is almost kind of like it's a wonderful life. Everybody comes together. You know, I mean, look what when, unfortunately, you know, Chris DiPaolo passed, how everybody came together. You know, um, it's sad for those situations. But at the same time, thank God people have that compassion and want to reach out and want to help and want to do whatever they can. So, you know, that's the lovely thing about this town. If families are struggling, there are places they can reach out with no judgment, no judgment at all. Um, but I understand the worry on the parents, you know, to because Christmas and the holidays have become so commercialized it's almost like if you don't spend this kind, this much money on a gift, and if you have multiple kids or whatever, you know you're like the worst parent ever. And 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 you're not, you're not the worst parent at all. Um, but it's but uh, the commercialization really has made it very hard because they are missing the reason for the season. One thing that a friend of mine did um, that I really loved uh, when when they had uh, little ones is um they made a point of having the big gifts um the big gifts come from mom and dad okay and uh santa brings little little things nice um so that when you go into school the next day uh you know or or the next week or whatever and people are you know kids are comparing and stuff um you know, it's not like, oh, Santa brought me a PS5 and and another kid is like, oh, Santa brought me, you know, socks and a yo-yo. Like what? Um, right, right. Like, 
and uh and then and then that uh so that was something that i saw that a lot of a lot of like uh younger families are doing now and i i that's, that's very I, smart actually yeah. i like that i like that idea a lot and also it gives some shine gives some extra shine to the parents which is never a bad thing uh you know so um you said managing financial stress during the holidays obviously yeah. like um you know do we have any like uh you know budgeting is a big deal gift giving um ways to avoid financial stress during the holidays well um again everybody everybody's different but you know what just spend what you can afford don't go into credit card debt you know don't buy something and put it on the credit card if you can't afford it you know go back to the old days of doing layaway and put it put it on that way so this way you know when january comes you don't have this credit card bill that you're going to freak out about and like oh my god what did i just do you know i wanted to give everybody the best christmas ever which is fine there's nothing wrong with that but don't feel like you have to go into that situation um if you can't afford it try to start saving throughout the year if you can if you can't that's okay too but you know something there's nothing wrong with homemade gifts because it's from the heart there's nothing wrong with anything you do because it's from the heart you Absolutely. just have to yeah you just have to know <coughs> you're doing your best and that's it two of the two of the best presents that i've ever gotten in my life both of them were birthday presents um were literally just cards that had uh meaningful notes in them mm -hmm. yeah so it depends on the situation obviously like i don't think a three-year-old's gonna necessarily understand that but sure. um but uh you know it's the stress that we put on ourselves right and the every single year i'm like you know what every single year in like january i'm like you know what i'm gonna make a christmas list now for everybody i'm gonna start thinking about it now and i'm gonna buy stuff throughout the year and yep. it's like every little you know all the time i'm just gonna and it never happens <laughs> i never actually do it i never actually purchase anything before you know december 15th and i'm like oh no oh i let the entire year get away from me and then you know, sometimes it's the it's the fear of the financial stress and it's the fear of the uh, uh, of that that can really drive us crazy. And uh, not that, that's a bad word to. Use no, 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 I get it. I get it. You know, you know. that's um, it, but it's it's the the stress that you're putting upon yourself is, um, you know. Right. Yeah. And, and like you said, when they're little, they don't even understand. They wouldn't even know. Yep. It's what, you know, they, you know, just like, um, you know, if you made a homemade cake versus buying a store-bought cake, they're not going to know. It's yep. just a cake, yep. you know? Um, so yeah, we, we shouldn't put stress on ourselves, but again, I think that goes back to the commercialization and kind of goes back to almost peer pressure on, on everything. Um, but, um, just do the best you can and, and know that, you, you've done it from your heart. And if you feel like you need to reach out, then then reach out and ask for help. And this community will do it. They'll come through. Okay. Um, absolutely. Uh, so another thing to talk about um, that can cause stress during the holidays is... Um, social obligations, you know, balancing social events, work commitments, personal time, like, uh, your, your calendar can really get lit, uh, you know, um, filled up very quickly. Like even here in Westerly, like there's, you know, just events, like just events that you'd want to go to, or you want to bring your kid to, like, there's, a uh, we have an embarrassment of riches, when it comes to fun events, right? To to take your kids to, or to go to, or to be a part of yourself. I mean, the Chamber of Commerce has you know Santa's arrival and starry lights, and 
the downtown stroll and yep. uh and um and the, the light lobster tree. trap and yep. the lobster trap tree that's five things that's five things which by the way shout out to the chamber of commerce that's insane that they do five things in the course of this you know uh, oh absolutely absolutely um, but that's five things right uh christ church had a festival of lessons and carols last night which was absolutely packed um, there was a hot, there were, uh, there was a holiday bazaar at Christ church yesterday. There was a holiday bazaar at central Baptist church. There was a holiday bazaar at this place. There's, you know, work Christmas parties, there's friends givings, there's, um, yep. there's, you know, get togethers personally with, with, uh, with, with your loved ones. There's, um, sometimes literally like when you, you know, you get married or whatever and, you have to, um, a lot of people like they'll open up, they'll have their Christmas morning at their house and then they have to go to one family, mm -hmm. um, in the, you know, in the afternoon and one family in the evening. And you're like a lot of people with young kids because they want to see the grandparents and they all want right. to, you know, like they're, they're running around the amount of obligations that you can. And then everybody's got a shop and everybody's got to cook and everybody's got to do this and everybody's got to do it. And you're just piling on stress over and over and over again with all of these obligations that we right. commit ourselves to during the holidays. Right. Oh yeah. Especially cooking. Cause uh, yeah, you, you should see my house during, during Christmas with, <laughs> with the cookies and stuff like that, that I'm, that I try to do. Like I just only started getting all the dough prepped. I haven't even like baked it, but I got the dough prepped. You know, that's like half the battle. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, yeah, making sure you got all your ingredients just to get it going. <laughs> uh, for Thanksgiving, I was for Thanksgiving. I'm like we're so busy with the with three two one Westerly and everything that we've got going on, and then that's a completely separate. You know, we also have three two one Media with all of our clients and stuff. Um, and we, we had the, I had Thanksgiving for four people. Right. But I was shopping at like nine 30 at night. Mm -hmm. I, uh, had to cook a Turkey the night before by myself. Uh, you know, actually it wasn't by myself. Thank you, Allie, for helping. Um, but I had to cook a Turkey the night before Thanksgiving. Right. And that didn't cool. So like, I didn't get a chance to start cooking the Turkey till like five 30 by the time it was cut and cooled and all of that stuff. And then that's because I didn't get her to work until the afternoon on Thanksgiving with the okay. Thanksgiving day football game and everything, which by the way, was fantastic. Right. Um, like by the time we ate on Thanksgiving, it was five o'clock and I had, you know, cooked a whole bunch of stuff for everybody. Like, incredibly stressful. Yeah. Incredibly stressful. And it was a very small event. Like, right. 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 Cause you just want to make it perfect for everybody. You do because you care because you care about your loved ones and your friends and family that are coming um, or or the people that you live with, uh, you know, whoever it may be um, or just yourself or the holiday or whatever. Like you want to, you know, you want to make it nice. You want to you want to do all of those things. But. Um, it's, and it's almost uh, like you're it's almost like you're glad when it's over. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you're, you're, you're very glad when it's over and sometimes uh, you know, there's so much anticipation behind everything that it can't live up to the hype of the anticipation. And then you have the emotional letdown that can occur after the holiday, you know, right. and you, you get in that post holiday blue situation of like, you know, sometimes it's like a vacation, right? Like you look forward to it. You look forward to it. You look forward to it. Yep, yep. And and have, it can yep. never live up to the expectations that you've set in your head for it. And then when it's over, you're like, crap what do we have now january that stinks or have you ever felt like you need a vacation from your vacation absolutely because, because you've put so much into it um you 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 put so many hours of of i gotta go do this 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 during that time it's like you know you're it's supposed to be fun and it's fun but then you're running 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 and and i can't tell you how many times i've come back and been like oh, god i need a vacation from vacation it was yeah. nice to have vacation from work, but now I got to have vacation from vacation. <laughs> yeah. um, I it love... is, it's, it's pressure we put on ourselves and we really shouldn't do that. We don't need to do that. No, we don't. Um, but we do, but we mm -hmm. do do it, you know, um, all the time we do it. 
Uh, one great way to handle stress uh, is exercise. And uh, so one great way to handle stress is exercise. And if you are looking for a fantastic way to uh, get into a little bit of extra shape, uh, extra better shape, whatever it may be, conditioning for you or your kids, uh, learn some discipline, learn some great things. We're going to go to a word from our sponsor right now, Kiefer's Martial Arts. <laughs> back in a second. I'm Michael Kiefer. I'm the owner of Kiefer's Martial Arts here in Westerly. We're here to help people. So with kids, yeah, they're kicking and punching and blocking and they're learning self-defense and they're getting a workout. Martial arts is physical, but we're also trying to embed those character development lessons into their classes as well. Perseverance and Donald Fierce. We get many referrals for kids that maybe have ADD or ADHD or kids that are maybe having some behavior problems. It's not to say I have a magic wand. Those are definitely things that we're gonna work on with them. We always have a two week trial program. So if anybody's like, oh, that sounds pretty cool, but I just don't know if my kid is gonna, is gonna like it and I don't wanna be locked in. Then you do the two week trial. I'm gonna give you a uniform, a private lesson, and you can come to classes for two weeks. So for people that are unsure, that's a great way to go about it. Did you like that? You did a whole loop around your house while we were at that commercial break, I saw. <laughs> I did, I did. Well, I'm the president of our condo association, and when the mailman came, I realized I'm missing something. So I found what I was what I was needing. Our condo mailbox um, is letter Z, as in zebra. And a lot of times they put the condo mail in number two. So oh, I went and checked it. <laughs> <laughs> and I got what I needed. <laughs> Excellent. Um, <laughs> glad to gl glad to know that. Uh, so um, <laughs> so uh, we're talking about stress from the holidays. Um, we're talking. We were just talking about post holiday blues, you know, and understanding the emotional letdown after the holidays and its causes, uh, or or um, you know the, the transitioning of back into daily routines. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, all of this stuff is as far as mental health goes, right. It's, um, an ounce, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure or whatever that saying is. Yep. Yep. Um, absolutely. And, uh, and one of the things that we can try to do for ourselves is practice these habits, practice these healthy habits, these healthy mental health ha habits, um, on a daily basis so that, uh, when we get to the holidays, when we get to these stressful times, we're not overwhelmed and then trying to do damage control. Right. Unfortunately, I think we're all kind of hardwired like that. So we don't think to do self-care first. We think of it after we've gotten stressed out. Um, so if we can start working on that ahead of time, working on breathing exercises, uh, working on walking, like you said, working on eating, eating better, working on knowing boundaries, setting boundaries with people, you know, if they have you upset about things, um, knowing it's okay to not help if it's going to hurt you. That's really, really important. You know, um, it's, it's okay. Same thing with the stigma. It's all about kind of the stigma, you know, we, we want to let people know it's okay. It's okay to have a bad day and it's okay to self-care. And that's, that's all we want. And, um, you know, we have people to talk with you at the center. We have the 988. There's a lot of resources around. We've just had um, three businesses actually ask for some signs so we got some more signs out around town and we posted it on our Facebook page um, of the companies that had asked for signs. So it's great. They're still, it's still being talked about. People are still wanting it, wanting to help, which is wonderful. You know, we're still working on getting more information into the schools. Um, I've been working with the, the Wellbeing Collaborative to, to work with them a little bit more um, where they would actually be at the resource center um, for some time as well 
and um, work with them to make the connections on how to how to uh, handle things better, you know, for for people, because this is all about it's all about helping the people, you know, and um, it's, it's important. It's, it's important. And you know something? It doesn't matter if, if you have a bad day and you're yelling at me. I'm not going to like it. I'm not going to lie, but I'm going to understand where it came from. And if you want the truth, I'm going to tell you the truth. If you want it sugar-coated, I don't know if I'm going to be the one to sugarcoat it for you, you right. know. Um, but know, know the people in your life that you can trust, and they will be the ones that will never fail you, you know. And you know something? I'm not going to sound weird, but it's okay for a man to cry. It's okay for them to get emotions out because I know that it stresses them out a lot more um, on certain things. And they're told that they got to be strong for the family and strong for everybody. And you know something? It's okay to cry. It's okay for me to cry. It's okay for you to cry. It's okay for anybody to show emotion. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you need, that's what you do. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, <laughs> it is uh, it is absolutely okay for a man to cry. Um, it's it's a it's a very natural human uh, reaction to to things happy and sad. You know, um, it's it's totally fine. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so I just feel that sometimes, especially now with the holidays, the men are feeling more of a pressure for their families, even more so maybe than the women. And they're not stating it verbally, yep. you know, and, and they're having their own little breakdown in private. And I just wanted to say, you know, I just wanted to mention that because I do think it's, it's, it's important and it's, and it's okay. Even if they don't want to show the emotions in front of the family members, they could just go in the shower and then just do what they got to do <laughs> with the emotions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so what, uh, what I wanted to talk about next was coping with loneliness. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people feel a lot of isolation during the holidays and that can really yeah. impact their mental health. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, if you had any suggestions for how people could connect with others, you know, maybe volunteering, joining community events, online events, online communities, anything like that, that people could uh, could be a part of. Yeah. Oh, ab absolutely. People can definitely, you know, they could reach out to us through our Facebook page or whatever. Um, we would glad to, you know, I know I would be glad to meet up with them, talk to them, have a cup of coffee, whatever they wanted. If they don't drink coffee, I mean, I don't, I drink tea, but, you know, I'd be glad to do that. Um, always looking for volunteers. Um, you know, and then just get to know the person and, and see what they like. And, you know, maybe it's, you know, they want to, they, they have social anxiety, so they don't want to be around people. Okay, that's fine. Maybe they want to be around people. So let's go somewhere that's fun, like maybe the bowling alley, you know, a movie could be okay with social anxiety, because you're seeing a movie, even though there's people there, you don't have to see them because you're sitting in the dark watching a movie. Yep. You know, so you know, little things, just getting, getting them out, you know, again, going back to like to church or something. Um, you don't have to be alone or feel that you have to be alone. And you, you know what, you can ask to join somebody. There's a, there's a friend I know that we both know, and I'm not going to name, but they ask on social media, Hey, you have an extra seat at your table. Can I come for Thanksgiving? You know, and they get a lot of responses, which is wonderful to see. There's nothing wrong with asking. If if you're unsure, you could put it out there and, and see what you get. Um, and I know people would open up their doors, you know, especially in this town. Um, but um, the only thing is, unless you let us know, we don't know. We won't know to reach out to you until you make the first move. And I understand that that could be hard, but even if you want to be anonymous behind a keyboard, you can have conversations that way. It's not a problem. Yep. You know? Yep. 
And uh, a, a great uh, thing to point out here is 988, which is the mental health resource number, um, uh, right. emergency line. Um, you can text that number. Right. You know, which is which is sometimes easier. Um, That's a good so, point. I, I thank you for making that because that is true that you can text it and you do get a response back. Yeah. So if you're, um, you know, cause sometimes it's easier to text. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, again, the privacy people don't know what exactly. you're doing. Exactly. Uh, so we've talked about coping with loneliness. We've talked about managing financial stress. We've talked about balancing social obligations. Um, you know, just holiday, holiday depression and anxiety in general, um, can, Obviously, like with winter, we have seasonal affective disorder um, where, you know, the shorter day is in the lack of sunlight and um, and just the, the cold and the, the overall everything can can sort of uh, heighten depression and anxiety symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, but the holidays, I feel like the holidays have their own separate version of the same thing. Like it it can exacerbate things that are already there. And Absolutely. it's, it's a huge trigger for a lot of people. Oh yeah. Well, like yourself, both of my parents are gone. They've been, but mine have been gone a long time. Uh, my dad, 34 years and uh, my mom, 17. And they're not buried close by. It's a bit of a drive for me to go and visit the grave, which I plan to do this weekend. I pack a lunch and I sit there and I talk to them. And it's what I need to do for me because I have friends, I, ha I have family, but nobody's close. Nobody lives close, excuse me, see? And it gets, it gets upsetting, but it's, you miss them because you miss the tradition that you've done. You miss them because they're just not here. Then yeah. you feel sorry for yourself because yeah. they're not here. And it's okay. And I'm getting emotional because I just think about it because I know how much there was love. And I'll never lose that love. I just lost them in the physical sense, not the spiritual sense. And so for me, taking the road trip to go to the cemetery and packing a lunch gives me a lot of peace. And, you know, that's just me. That's just my silliness. But the holidays I don't, I don't make it harder. Nice. Yeah. Because it's kind of right in your face because it's all about as they put on TV again, you know, family, 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 which there's nothing wrong with that. It's just when you don't have immediate family, it makes it a little bit more challenging. So for me, that's been a new tradition I've started is I pack a lunch and I make my few hour drive and I go sit at the cemetery for a while. I bring some flowers and, um, we have lunch. We have lunch. <laughs> I love that. Um, thank you for, for being uh, so open and vulnerable about that. Um, I uh, have yet to establish anything like that for myself. Um, and I know that I need to uh, because, you know, so like last year, um, that this was the first this was the first year that i um cooked thanksgiving dinner uh for for you know uh my girlfriend and her mom and and my uncle and and it was just the four of us and that was a new tradition and last year on christmas um uh obviously i you know i live with friends and uh the coolest little 8 year old in the world and, um, and we have our Christmas morning stuff that we've done for, you know, seven years, um, six years, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but the, the, uh, 
you know, last, last Christmas, um, I went to, uh, her family's house for Christmas dinner and their, their family get together. And that was the first time that I had done that. Uh, and it was the first time I had met those people as well. Um, her family and, uh, you know, we'll be going back there for Christmas this year. Um, and that's sort of like become a new tradition and, that's uh that's really nice um so i'm 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 happy about that uh that that's all been really swell to, to 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 do that but it's you know um i was looking through we were watching tv last night and i was uh we were watching home alone <laughs> um we were watching Home Alone last night, and I was I was looking through my phone to uh, to find a picture of me at like five years old, six years old, because I looked like I was a little blonde, mischievous kid, um, and uh, and um, had the the pouty lips and everything, like uh, like Macaulay Culkin, um, and uh, I was looking through those photos. And it's in a photo album in my uh, in my phone under uh, Mom Mother's Day because I made her a video for Mother's Day a few years ago. And so as I'm looking through it, I'm seeing a bunch of like family photos for from the holidays of of all of us, uh, you know, of my my aunt and uncle and my parents sitting around the table. And um, and uh, I, you know, showed jackie some of those photos um and i was like they would have loved you and then we were still watching it and we had moved on and whatever and i just started to think about like what holidays would be like you know because i'm like oh you know what it actually would all fit in because she has her tradition of going to her family's house and my parents didn't really do anything in the evening anyway so like you know, we probably would have had breakfast or whatever. And, you know, and then like thinking about all of that stuff and thinking about them and like, uh, I don't allow myself a lot of time in my day or my week or whatever to get to that, those feelings, get to those moments. I'm always go, 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 go. You know, we have 5,000 shows that we're producing and, dozens of clients and advertisers and uh community events and all of these things that we're that that we're doing and um and I try to just like look forward as much as possible but um in that moment that like two minutes that I took to think about that it was like deep emotional you know what I mean like that was <laughs> That. So I, I have not um, I have not come up with any sort of tradition myself, uh, but I'm, I'm I love your uh, your your drive and making a day of it and going and bringing lunch, um, packing a lunch and bringing that to the cemetery and having lunch with your parents. I think that's beautiful. And um, that's something I might steal from you. Uh yeah, that that's fine. It's it's just I, I yeah, I think it would be a problem. <laughs> well, for me, I mean, it's you know, it's it's they're not they're not here. They're they're not close by. So yeah. um, they're in New York. So um, it's just the best way for me to be at peace. And honestly, the drive. Sometimes I don't know how you are, but sometimes for me, when it's like that. And I just want to be in my thoughts. I don't even put the radio on. I just yeah. like the silence. Yeah. And I just go and I think and um, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, for me, my dad had a quick heart attack and dropped dead unexpectedly at the age of 59. And my mom had cancer. So I, ha I had both, you know, where the, it was hard. Up, yeah where it's hard on the family because they're just gone in an instant and not expecting it. And then it's hard on the family because you know, it's coming with the cancer, but you can kind of put your house in order a little bit with the cancer. Um, so yeah, two, two totally different extremes, two totally horrible, you know, things. Um, but, um, you know, you just keep persevering and try to be the good person they, brought you up to be
and do the best you can. Yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, the, the lunch thing took a long time. I'm not going to lie. It took a long time to do it. I would, I would visit it and stuff, but then I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just bring a sandwich and have it with them? You know? And, and that's what I started doing the last few years. Believe it or not, it's just really been the last few years I started doing it, but it made things peaceful for me, you know, because I didn't feel like I had to rush. Don't ask me why, but sometimes I felt like, oh, I'm hungry. I have to say bye and go, you know, like hit and run. And then I'm like, why am I doing that? Let's bring it with me and have, have, you know, a picnic with them type of thing. <laughs> and so that, and that's what I do. And um, where my parents are is a lot of my family. It's my aunts, my uncles, my grandparents, my great grandparents are there too, um, on my mom's side. So I vi I visit all of them, but I um, but I didn't know them all. You know, I didn't know my great grandparents. I actually didn't even really know my grandparents because of uh, the age difference. My parents um, were forty years older than me, and I was there first. So I lost a generation in there. So when people are like, oh, you miss your grandparents? I'm like, no, not really, because I didn't miss what I didn't have. Yeah. But I still pay my respects. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, so, yeah, that's all. <laughs> I, I get it. My dad was my dad was 44 um, when I was born. And uh, my mom, my, my mom was in her 30s, which is normal. Um, but my dad was, my dad was an older dad, 44. Uh, I had, um, my grandmother, uh, my dad's mom who lived with us until she was, she, I mean, she, she didn't pass away until she was in her mid nineties. Um, we, we, wow. got a lot, we got a lot of time with her. Uh, but you know, for me, and I've said it before, like I, um, it was COVID it was 2020. Uh, my dad went within three or four days. Um, and, uh, you know, did not get to, I, they transferred him to Yale. I was not allowed to go. Um, and my mom, uh, was Christmas morning, which, you know, holidays, uh, but my mom was Christmas morning and, uh, it was also COVID. So I wasn't allowed to go. And, um, you know, we literally didn't even have a, an, an opportunity like, um, the, you know, the funeral home called me and was like, Hey, with the, it's December, 2020. And they were like, we don't have another option. Like we have to do uh cremation. Like we have to, cause it's, it's a co like we're, cause, of COVID. Not, cause of COVID, like none of us are touching the, you know, and, um, and uh, it was just this crazy thing where I never got to say goodbye um, because we weren't having gatherings at that time, like we didn't have funerals and cause I can do this stuff. We right. did, um, you know, we did, uh, virtual memorial services for both of them. And, um, there's just been like absolutely no closure. It's crazy right. because, you know, well, yeah, because you, didn't, you didn't get to see them. Right. I didn't get to see them. I My, get that. My my dad died at 6.32 a.m. on a Sunday morning. And at 9 a.m. I was producing a church service. Oh, yeah. uh, and and my mom, uh, I got the call at like 5 a.m., uh, 4.45 a.m. On, uh, on Christmas morning that, um, that it was a no-go and we were going to have to, you know, uh, pull the plug and make the decision, um, which was awful. And... Uh, and I couldn't do anything. And I, at 10 a.m., like I had to go through opening presents with a five-year-old. Right. And, uh, and, and wait, you know, go to the bathroom and try to call the doctors and like, again, not allowed to go, uh, see them, uh, see her. And, uh, and then also did a church service at 10 a.m. Now here's the thing. Do I regret any of it? No, because, uh, and I believe you, do you belong to Christ church? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yes. um, so there was a, uh, you know, you're like, when I tell people that story, they're like, Oh my God, I can't believe like, who cares about the church service at that point? Like, just don't do it. Like your mom just died, you know, which is a very reasonable thing to say. Sure. Don't do it. 
Um, and I didn't want it. And, uh, but I, I did want to, and I wanted to because of my grandmother actually, um, because she broke her hip when I was like five and she could never go to her church again because she couldn't drive and she didn't get, they had stairs and stuff. So she didn't have, and, and it was the nineties. So she didn't have any of this stuff that we have now with the virtual, um, with online churches and stuff like your local church, you know, she wasn't mm -hmm. interested in the Joel Osteen's of the world. Um, and, uh, during this past October, during the stewardship campaign, um, Dave was producing church on Saturday night and he texted me and he said, you need to listen to Becky's, uh, to Becky's, um, speech about stewardship and i did and she talked about how her family was having a really rough time and i don't know what the details are i don't need to share them here but um this woman was talking about how she her family was having a really rough time and on christmas 2020 uh they had you know they had been going through a really difficult time um and christmas morning they they turned on facebook and they saw that service and it changed their whole life and they became members of the church and they found this whole new family and they, you know, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. And now they're out here doing a bunch of good and putting a bunch of good in the world and all of this stuff. And like the service that they saw mm -hmm. was the service that you were doing that I was doing mm -hmm. while getting phone calls of right. hey, we haven't found a doctor yet to to place the order to you know end my mom's life like that and it was Christmas morning and like all of right. this so like these horrible things for me was a and blessing I for someone else and it was a blessing for someone else mm -hmm. and um those things are why it's easier for me to look forward mm -hmm. you know instead of instead of looking back but the uh you know it matters and to to take the moments like you did and to create those new traditions where you're paying homage and you're you know allowing yourself to um process and respect and be there with your family that's gone and your loved ones that you've missed um that's that's huge i love that and i really i need to to do more of that so thank you <laughs> But you don't feel guilty or anything, do you? Because it was out of your control. Oh, I felt guilt for a long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm doing better with that now. But yeah, no, I felt guilt and shame and a whole bunch of other stuff uh, for for not being there. Well, it was it wasn't that you, for lack of not wanting to be there. That's for sure. Right. It, it was the COVID issue. So just know you did everything that you could and and you know they know they knew that and that oh, they yeah. love you and you love them so yeah it, it's absolutely it's not easy yeah but, um and i think it's great that i know again of course i'm sorry for your loss too but i think it's great that we share this because it just makes it real yep. for people absolutely absolutely and it's a you know it's um when you can be vulnerable and share your story, other people can know that they're not as alone as they may have thought that they were. Exactly. And that's why I've always shared my story too about the accident and how it all came about and how I went down that slippery slope and it's okay. You know, knowing, you know, what I had to deal with and how did, I had to cope and like I said, everybody does it differently, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's okay to have those, those breaks. It just, re it just really is. It's, o it's okay. Cause that's just part of life and being normal. I mean, could you imagine actually, if we didn't have these, they, these little setbacks, how boring things would be. <laughs> I know. Right. Um, <laughs> I, know, I know. Uh, so Mary, what, um, what are we do you have any ideas as to what we're going to talk about the rest of the week um, i mean next week next month anything like that 
I don't at the moment. I'm trying to still get some more people involved and maybe even get more people online with us to have these conversations. Um, but it'll probably show its ugly head if I say it that way. And um, we'll, we'll figure it out because um, I think we'll probably still stick with the theme of the holidays because now we'll have gone through, some people already have gone through some Christmas parties, the light parades this weekend. Um, so I, I think we'll, as it gets closer to the holidays, we'll see more things that people are struggling with. And then maybe we can address those struggles more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, thank you so much, Mary. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching um, or listening on the 321 Radio app. Download the 321 Radio app on your App Store or Google Play Store uh, and take us with you um, in your pocket. And uh, not only that, but you will never miss a Westerly High School sports game. You'll never miss um, any of our morning shows uh, Monday through Friday. Um, all of the podcasts that we put out. And when we're not doing a live show like that, it's 24 seven music curated by Dave DeAngelis. We had a wonderful uh, event last night, the jam sesh where he takes us through some live albums. Um, last night we listened to queen live at Wembley um, and, uh, and, a, and a new live album by Corey Wong uh, next week on Sunday night. I believe we have a, um, a 50th anniversary live show that we're playing of the grateful dead. Uh, the um, on Friday nights, we're doing full album Fridays uh, every morning to, to get you up and ready from 6am to 8am. We have the morning mixtape. Um, and uh, you know, we're, we're playing Christmas music most days now uh, leading up to the holiday. Um a lot of fun stuff. He's putting a lot of thought and care into the music over there on the app when you're not listening to uh, Mary and I or, or one of these shows. So thank you guys so much. Thank you to our sponsors, Lathrop Insurance, Roof Right Roofing, um, DNV Mechanical, Kiefer's Martial Arts, Wireless Zone. Uh, thank you guys so much for everything. We're going to uh, go out on a commercial for DNV. Mary, anything else you want to say before we go? I uh, just want to thank you again for everything that you do and also wish people happy Hanukkah. I believe it starts this week. Yes, it does. Yes, so, it does. Happy so. Hanukkah. And, uh, <laughs> to thank you so much. See thank you, soon. you. See you thank soon. You. Hot summers and cold winters can be unbearable, but DNV Mechanical has the solution for you. As a Mitsubishi Diamond dealer, we provide energy efficient and personalized comfort solutions for your home. Our experienced technicians will install your new system quickly and efficiently, ensuring your complete satisfaction. Don't suffer through another season of discomfort. Contact DNV Mechanical today for a personalized ductless mini split installation that fits your lifestyle. DNV Mechanical, your comfort is our top priority.